Matthew Herman is the co-founder of Boy Smells, a candle and fragrance brand breaking gender norms and making loving your identity a beauty ritual of its own. Stay tuned as we discuss Matthew's favorite scent, where his love for beauty began, and the brand's recent launch into Sephora. Hi everyone and welcome to Founder Beauty, the podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs built some of the biggest brands today and where we learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Main, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. Building Fable and Main has been an incredible journey so far, and I've decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow beauty brand founders around the world. I believe in collaboration over competition, and so I'm using this platform as a way to hopefully help and inspire each other in what can be quite a tough and lonely journey. So if you are an entrepreneur or simply just curious how to build a brand, this podcast is perfect for you. So without further ado, it's would like to welcome our guest for today, Matthew Herman. He is the co-founder of Boy Smells, a line of fine fragrances, candles, and intimate apparel. Launching their first products in 2016, Matthew and his co-founder and partner David began by experimenting in the kitchen, fusing traditional masculine scents into more feminine settings. And fast forward to today where Boy Smells is celebrated for its distinct genderful scents, an aesthetic that transcend the gender binary and have gained cult status. I love that Matthew has rethought beauty routines into a lifestyle, with the brand expanding from candles and home scents to hand lotions and personal fragrances. With each nuanced product and its lack of gender labels, Matthew has truly made Boy Smells accessible to all and set the standard for inclusivity in the spheres of self-care and wellness. I cannot wait to discuss the journey to date. So Matthew, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. I'm excited. So I asked all my guests the same question. I'm going to ask mm-hmm. you, who in a nutshell is Matthew? Uh, I think at my heart, I have always just been a creative that's been interested in building worlds and kind of remixing culture. And I've always really been inspired by the dual, the tension and dualities, I guess, really. Mm. Um, you know, I started as a fashion designer. Um, I went to Central St. Martin's in London and yeah. I worked mostly in luxury fashion. And, you know, I even did my thesis when I was at St. Martin's about kind of the tension of masculine and feminine. Um, Basically, you know, feminine thinking is very holistic. Masculine thinking Mm -hmm. is very linear. And I've always related to both. And, you know, also talking about fashion and how drapery is the holistic treatment of cloth and very feminine and tailoring is the linear treatment of cloth and very masculine and kind of, you know, some of my favorite fashion designers, uh, like at the time when I was at school, McQueen or Galliano or Vivian Westwood, you know, they always really like sat at the intersection of drapery and tailoring. And I always thought that that kind of um, the tension and like the newness of like what they were doing at the time really influenced kind of how I saw the world. And I think, you know, growing up as a queer kid in Texas, you know, my femininity was always something that I really loved and was like really precious to me, but like very much not encouraged necessarily or Mm. celebrated, um, in, in the environment that I grew up in. So, you know, creating boy smells, um, it's called boy smells, but it comes in a pink box. And, you know, uh, at a certain age, I kind of started giving myself permission to love that side of myself to wear fragrances that had rose or tulip or, you know, jasmine at its heart. And that kind of um, self permission to occupy the space that I wanted to regardless of the expectations of other people, you know, that's what really kind of led us to make boy smells and kind of create a lot of the sense that, that we're known for today. Oh, that's amazing. Well, okay. There's so much I want to get into. I think let's yeah. start at the beginning. So you were born in, we're born and raised in Texas, right? Yeah. Austin, Texas. Yes. 
Austin, Texas. I just actually went to Austin for the first time. I I stayed at Soho House there in that area. Thinking about, I went all around yeah. and um, I was like, how have I not been to Texas before? Like, it's I loved. It. I, I actually wish I stayed longer. But I'm going to go back. Um, but I would love to know some of like your earliest memories of of beauty, kind of growing up in Texas. Do you have any like? Is it either at home or with yeah. family or maybe grandparents? Like, yeah. I think like on both sides like the, I kind of had a fascination um with both maybe my mom's vanity and my dad's you know like my yeah. dad's colognes that he wore always felt like oh this is like a very powerful kind of like you know like if I wear this like hyper masculine I think he wore like a polo green and like the casual massy green briar and um and both of those scents were kind of like these like kind of more traditional kind of bergamotti kind of you know kind of green masculine fragrances um lots of woods in there and stuff too and so i always really associated that with like my dad putting on a suit and going to work and you know he was you know and like just this kind of like uh and and, and powery kind of thing and then you know my mom she always had these like powders from france and just uh different like special uh soaps and just like a lot of little like beautiful kind of like they're almost like objects you know like in in the bathroom and like i remember just like loving the fantasy and the beauty and the prettiness of all of that and like but also kind of being like oh that's not for me or that's supposed to be kind of off limits and you know Mm -hmm. uh you know, loving both sides of that, um, I, I, I distinctly remember, like, both of those things. And my parents had uh, their own bathrooms, you know? So, like, yeah. my mom was very, like, feminine and da-da-da. My dad was, like, very masculine and da-da-da. And so, you know, like, under, I think everybody kind of understands their, like, if you grow up with uh, heterosexual parents, um, you know, I think you kind of learn gender identity through them and i think that the bathroom Mm. and the vanity is like a big part of of reinforcing those stereotypes no it's and it's it's so funny because so my father is in the fragrance industry for 40 years and i remember like Mm -hmm. i've always had a nose that was more uh, i guess my nose is more suited. I enjoy more floral, uh, less mm-hmm. like I don't like the woods in the woods. And always, when I was gifted or given fragrances, either from dad or whatever, it was always like the the, the fragrances I would be like, oh, like I prefer the one my sister got. It was so funny yeah. growing up. And I kind of was always confused. And I always then started asking for unisex fragrances. And at that time, you know, 30 years ago, it was like, there wasn't really many unisex fragrances. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really a thing. It was just kind of like, you get the male or the female, and that's what you got. And I was always, like, annoyed. I was like, oh, can I, can I have some of yours, Nikki? Um, and, yeah, it's actually so... When you say that, it's so familiar to my upbringing. I was like... I, and that was something that I didn't even question too much. I just was normalized back then, right? But I'm so yeah. happy today we have so many more options, and I think it's just... Uh, finally, people are you know, speaking out more about what they enjoy. This has always been existing for centuries, like, you know, a long time. It's just what was expected and normalized back then was very different to today. Um, so I'm glad we've got to movement in the industry today, especially in the fragrance industry. And I can say this from working in, uh, I used to work in conglomerates from Estee Lauder to Dior, uh, even over the years of working there, how our marketing communication was, you know, how we said stuff. Like I remember at the beginning, it was always like she, she. And then I was always like, okay, but like, you know, there's also, it could be he, uh, you know, there's, and it could be they. Uh, and, and actually it was changing over time. So it's just cool to see that growth in the industry, but there's still, still a way to go. But I think brands like yourself are, are the ones that are inspiring the industry all in all, because the best way to make change is inspiration, not, um, not really accountability sometimes, but, you know, I think. Yeah, absolutely. By the next brand. It's a so bummer because, so, it's yeah. a bummer because like a lot of, you know, if you get in with, uh, when you run a business, you know, a lot of it is driven by the data you get back, understanding your audience, stuff like that. And it's just like yeah. every um, segmentation that you'll receive from a marketing firm or back end mm-hmm. metrics Retailer from or whatever. Yeah. Any of the platforms that you use, they're always based on like, this is your percentage of female audience. This is your percentage of male audience. And, you know, and it's just like, 
we try to look at it more like what are the common interests, you know, of our groups? Are yeah, they into the humanities? Yeah, are they into music and entertainment? Are they into, you know, travel? You know, like really understanding like what the interests of our customer are and like let that drive kind of, you know, you know, so, in, well, not drive, but inform sometimes like yeah. how we talk to them a little bit. But like we try not to let we, we never let the gender break of our audience inform how we speak to them. No, that's that's um, that's amazing, and you can really see that through all my interactions with the brand has been. I can see that DNA throughout, which is hard to do when you have different stakeholders, retailers, you know, shelf strips and this and that. But I can really see that DNA. But you have to start the brand with a very clear kind of integral mission and purpose that you really kind of have your core values are tied to. So now I love that. But before we go into Boy Smells and the creation of the brand, I do want to talk a little bit about your incredible career in fashion. Um, yeah. I think uh, uh, it's, it's exciting what you've done. And I think that, again, um, your experience there only adds to your experience now in, in the beauty industry. It's all, it's all a very connected space. Uh, would love for you to like, yeah, maybe sum up that. I know you worked in places from Zach Posen to Nasty Garlic. Tell us, tell us about it all. Yeah, so um, I went to, as I mentioned, I went to Central St. Martin's in London, and <clears throat> that was like a hugely informative like time in my life. Um, you know, really getting yeah. to basically, I you know, I I researched and was you know addicted to. Um, the work of certain people. And so I really research, you know, where did they go? Like, wh like what was their career path? All that kind of stuff. And so, you know, uh, I decided on Central St. Martin's because that's basically where everybody who I really loved had gone. And um, spending that time in London and e living in East London and just that kind of like, like radical, like head dive into like being the most creative and like following your concepts like to the like to the furthest degree um was just really inspiring i think that the american at least the american creative education i'd had so far in my life just didn't really kind of push you to the furthest depths of of where your mind and imagination can go so that was super exciting yeah. for me. It was also very competitive, you know? So I learned that, you know, working the hardest sometimes is the way to get ahead in life. Yeah. That's a little bit of a double-edged sword because, <laughs> you know, yeah. work, work, like n now we're in the age of like work shouldn't be your whole life. And, you know, you got to yeah. carve out more time for yourself. And, and then you hear this like work smarter, not harder. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, but you also need to work hard too. <laughs> like it's like, well, everything has like, there's no, it's a yin and yang of everything. Right. But yeah, I completely get what you mean. Totally. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 I got a lot of grit there. I think, you know, um, it being so competitive and, and just working so hard and, I worked for um, Giles Deacon in London for a little bit and then, um, which was kind of like an internship turned into like, we'll start paying you to, you know, kind of bottom of the totem pole. And then I moved back to the States yeah. and um, I interned, at, well, I had previously been an intern at Prinza, then I worked there mm -hmm. for a little bit freelance and then I got my first full-time job at Zach Posen and I worked there for a couple, for many years and then. I got a call uh, from LA and I was kind of getting stagnant in my life in New York. I still love New York. Mm. It's um, really where my heart is. But, you know, I got this call from a new up and coming brand, um, D2C e commerce kind of darling. And I had started to get really interested in, like, you know, um, especially working at Zach, which is so fabulous and it's all fantasy, but you know, it's so yeah. much embroidery, so much technique, like corsetry. And like, I loved all that, but I was like, really wanted a new challenge and I'd never done anything in fast fashion before. So I went out to be design director of dresses at Nasty Gal, which was an amazing opportunity because it was the same level of like research and travel and you know going and buying vintage and renting vintage pieces and you know a lot of that inspiration kind of trips and like stuff like that is is really important in high-end fashion 
but like you don't necessarily um i didn't wasn't expecting that from my experience at nasty gal because i thought of fast fashion as like oh it needs to be like watered down or like you know made for everyone but there it was really exciting to work for a fast fashion brand that was really catering to a new customer and taking that really you know those really high-end influences but like bringing them to market at an affordable price so you know if we like bought a vintage July address we could like you know work with it and edit it and like you know and turn it into something completely new but like just in a fabric yep. that was a lot less exp expensive and I really fell in love with this concept of like not in any way sacrificing on concept or design but being able to bring it to a much more inclusive price point and allow people to kind of like get something that maybe felt out of reach before or like a look and that really translated into like a, that really informed about a lot in like my approach and what I was thinking about when we started voicemails as well because you know at that time the affordable candle brands were like Veluspa and Nest and then like anything yeah. that you really really wanted like Byredo or Diptyque or Sir Trudon they were just like so unobtainable in price yeah um so it was this kind of informed I was like I, I only like really cool modern complex crazy scents but and I don't like these more traditional scents but there's like nothing that's like really filling a hyper modern like olfactive like interesting perfumery kind of space you know at this price point i mean yeah uh, looking back that's what i know at the time we were just like we only want to pay this much for a candle we like the like we like modern scents and we were just like let's make what we want but i don't think you know we don't come from business backgrounds we weren't like we're filling yeah. a white space in the market you know like like all of that oh the things God. that we put in like decks now you know were just of like look how clever we were to do this it was just instinct at the time you know we were making a candle brand that was called boy smells and came in a pink box we literally were like this will be like a fun weekend hobby like we never thought it would like yeah. Turn it like we weren't like oh here's our five year business plan and this is going to be you know some big success we were like this this is probably like we'll be hawking these at like weekend flea markets and, so, and stuff like that. <laughs> but that's like you know I think you as a consumer and as someone who's probably you know bought candles and stuff, it's really that. I remember my first interaction with Boy Smells. I think it was in Bloomingdale's, and uh, I was like looking to buy something for a gift for someone's home, and I had like this budget in mind, right? It's like mm -hmm. you know, like roughly like hundred dollars or something. And I was like at this, or like even a bit less actually. And I was like, was it eighty dollars? And I was like, oh, um, like okay, did, did the same. The Diptyque, the Citron, either really expensive, or you just get like a small little candle for that amount. And it's like, also everyone, it's very like everyone has it. It's like, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's like not special enough. And then the other ones were a little bit too cheapy or cheap looking I would say mm -hmm. and I saw boy smells there like, and I was like oh my god this is beautiful and I looked at the price I was like oh my god this is like incredible I can get a magnum size for the same amount and this is like the best gift it looks stunning so I gave that as a gift I got I think I got a few more and I was like this is like I think the perfect product and I was really ups upset with myself because I was like I wish I bought some more for me so then yeah, <laughs> I, I later I did so <laughs> but it's one of those things where you're like you don't even want to gift it anymore you're like I want it for me too so but you've really really mastered that kind of um again uh desirability uh of course it has to look pretty if you're thinking about especially gifting um, or keeping it in your home in the mantelpiece thank you. but also at a really reasonable price point um where I know from having made a candle with Fable and Main just for our website, right? Just like mm -hmm. an ancillary, it's not our main business. I know how expensive they are. And I was looking at your price point with all your, your vessel, your quality, your outer packaging. And I was like, you've sacrificed margin for the customer here. I'm like, that's really a lot of kudos to you as a founder, because that means you're putting out something customer first and profit second, you know, purpose over profit. Really, yeah. really. I mean, I hope people realize that. Um, it's really amazing what you've built. Yeah, um, I mean, so, I mean, if you have to increase prices later, I mean, I think you should a little bit because it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we did, we did go through a little price increase, um, you know, cause during you have the pandemic, to with the supply raw side, materials, yeah. you know, and shipping costs, there's the pandemic really kind of like 
re reorganized a lot of operational things that um that unfortunately yeah. you know the mandated a price you increase control. in control yeah and raw materials just increased across the board and labor and stuff like that so we're very mm. proud to be able to like what we what we call an inclusive price point you know and inclusivity yeah. is so important to us that you know yeah. making sure that you know most people are able to participate in the brand if they want to is, is a really important like cornerstone to, to our belief. So I kind of want to talk about, um, so I know the brand would probably have been conceived uh, iterations 2015 and then 2016 was when like the actual launch of like, I guess the mm -hmm. retail side of the business too. Um, let's start first with the name. What was the true inspiration behind the name Boy Smells? You know, in 2016, I mean, that was, you know, six years ago, but it's really, yeah. I think it's hard to even remember back to like when that was, you know, and like what yeah. was going on in culture, you know, um, yeah. it was a point where, um, you know, I, for me personally, there we were at, I felt, you know, finally a sense of permission to you know, explore a side of myself that I had always wanted to, but it just didn't feel like there was enough breathing room and culture to do so. And that's on yeah. that. That's for me personally. I'm not saying for everyone, um, but yeah. there started to be the same kind of like just little embers of kind of let's start provoking and, um, and, and just letting go of the things that mm. have ruled the way we all see ourselves in the past and especially gender, gender diversity, uh, you know, sex, sexuality, gender, like people starting to like break down the, all of these things are different. Um, mm. you know, like, uh, there was a lot, just, there's a lot more, the, we're at the precipice of a lot more conversation that was so that's been so fun to like unpack over the past couple of years. But, you know, I was always at the fragrance counter and being like, I remember spraying this one fragrance and it being like, mm. uh, and even though the line itself was mostly unisex, they were like, this one is only for men and this one's only for women and everything else is unisex. And I was like spraying the one that was like only for women, you know? Um, mm. And, and I was like, why, why would you even say that? Like, you know what I mean? I was like, I was like, I obviously like this one, you know, like this is the one I'm going to yeah. buy. Like, why, why would you even feel the need to call out that? Like, this is the only one that's just for women. And you know, I think yeah. beyond that, I was starting to like be like, I love the color pink. And like, it's in just things that like, I was just starting to be like, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to go with what I would I, with what I like. So we called it boy yeah. smells, but we put it in the pink box to kind of give this sense of permission to be like, whatever, mm. you know, like it, whatever's for me is for me. And then, you know, I was yeah. working at Nasty Gal still when I, when we started the brand, cause we, I literally thought it was just going to be like a little, like fun side thing and i yeah. took it into work and literally and i was one of the few men that really worked at at, at nasty it was mostly women and, and in my team it was all women i was the only the only guy in in the design division so literally mm. like every buyer every girl on the design team everybody was like oh this is so cool i'm gonna give this to my friends for christmas like how many can i get you know like it was just like every and i was like what is going on and then i realized you know all of these girls are wearing like Tuscan leather by Tom Ford or Santal 33. Yeah. They're all wearing like chunky Rolexes exactly. and boyfriend blazers. And like the idea that it was like called Boy Smells in a pink box, it also gave like all of my like cis straight female friends. Like also like I didn't realize like they were also like on, you know, feeling this as well. You know, they were also like yeah. breaking the binary with the fragrances that they were wearing every day. And I was like, this is Absolutely. so cool, you know? And so it, that, that kind of like, it just hit on something, you know, like everybody just really responded mm. to the branding and everybody loved the sense. And, um, and, you know, I think boy smells is our biggest equity, you know, like our, our product is, is fantastic and mm. we, and our scents are amazing, but 
you know, I the name itself and the branding seems to be the biggest kind of like stop in your tracks and pay attention to the brand for a second. And I think that that's kind of what's yeah. really at least got our foot in the door with a lot of conversations or, or with a lot of customers or, or potential customers. Oh, definitely. Tell us a bit about the cadence of launching, because I know 2016 you launched, and then 2017 the Intimate Power launched, then Inoki Phantom mm -hmm. in 2019. So there's a lot of different moments of newness, and, and today now you have obviously the fine, you have the fragrances to the, mm -hmm. the washes and the body care range. So kind of paint us that picture till 2022. Yeah, so we started with our first um, six candles in 2016. <laughs> Um, I'm from Austin and I was back in Texas and we kind of had like a trade show or like a trunk show at, you know, a friend's mm. house. And then a friend of mine had just bought a, a fashion boutique in Austin. So I, I, I dropped some candles off with him. Uh, then, you know, we just started sharing it with different people in different places. A, a friend who had been at Nasty Gal had started like a really cool online uh, fashion boutique that everybody was talking about. I sent her some candles and, you know, it was really through our connections in the fashion industry that we kind of, you know, started to get the product out there. And so within the first six months, we were at some like really great key retailers that aren't mm. like huge business, but like their assortment and like the lines that they carry, a lot of people look at just to like, try to understand like like the direction of the wind you know and as far as like what's going to be cool and stuff like that so we we're at a kind of a, a lot of like tastemaker type of retailers um and we and we really led with that positioning for the first couple of years that we were really just at like the coolest places to get the coolest stuff so um after that uh you know i think about a year in barney's called and wanted to bring it on then um, there's a section of Nordstrom that's called Nordstrom space. That is just like, it only carries like the really cool thing. It carries like acne and Christopher Kane and like Vetamont. And like, it was like, just kind of, it was like in only in 13 of the Nordstrom's around the U S but they were kind of like these like super pinnacle, like fashion boutiques Like JW Anderson was in there, stuff like that. So they put us in those 13 Nordstrom doors. And after the success of that, we, we eventually got brought down to, uh, the Nordstrom beauty section and, and rolled out to, to all doors in the U S of Nordstrom. And then, you know, it was like Harrods, Liberty Browns, Farfetch, Selfridges, yeah. uh, you know, it just, it just kind of dominated. Everyone out. wanted a piece of it. Yeah. <laughs> it was exciting. And then Sephora really, Sephora was in 20 this year, right? Yeah. Sephora we launched in, um, like very end of August, like beginning of September. Um, and it's been really fun and really exciting and a, and a very different kind of like set of tools that we've had to develop or, or different muscles that we've had to develop and flex just like, you know, it's yeah. a very different, um, it's a different kind of uh, retail experience that has yeah. been really fun to build into. Like, designing all of our visual merchandising there like you know it's been the first time we've really let the brand come to life as like a desk a branded destination point uh, um which obviously as a creative person has been super fun to dig into definitely yeah i can tell you when we launched our, so my brand was launched in sephora day one so that's kind of like you can imagine like the mm -hmm. the the different mindset i was like okay that's all i knew was like crazy co-ops and like event in a box and what we did we did launch the pandemic so the store part was a bit delayed but yeah. um yeah it was just such a beast of a retailer but still such a partner right that yes you if you play the game with them you can really accelerate your brand to another level but it does cost a lot it's a but they're invaluable as well as a as potential like partners consultants they have so much data and they have the consumers so i think it's yeah it's always exciting um you know i don't know for me i've always felt sephora was like the mecca of beauty uh in in the world and it's just very cool to get both have brands at sephora which i think is that's it's awesome. always exciting right and yeah and just even popping by to be like oh, i get top of i'm gonna go to my local sephora we're finally getting a sephora here in the uk very soon too which is exciting because we never had it here um, so yeah, we have the Selfridges and I still, I still, no matter what, I will always have a soft spot for Selfridges. I think it's a, such a cool experiment, the experiment so much with retail and innovation. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I mean, well having, you know, 
spent my college years in fashion, you know, in, in London. Yeah. I just have, I have a love for, I have such a love for Browns, for Liberty, yeah. for Harrods, for Selfridges, you know, all of those. Yeah. You, you know, know the, all of them. Yeah. Those such formative memories for me, you know, to like go out, yeah. like, you know, but, um, yeah. I, I love it. Student, but, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. The cool thing for us about Sephora is that, you know, um, because we launched as a candle brand, you know, a lot of retailers and a lot of customers think about us as candles first. But, you know, in mm. Sephora, we are in the fragrance uh, section and are yes. right now we're doing about uh, 65 to 70 percent in fine fragrance, which is wow. so fantastic. They're getting behind fine fragrance as like the primary um, versus most retailers yeah. get behind candles as a primary. And candles. so many, so many people discover brands at Sephora, you know, it's such like a, it's such a destination for beauty and fragrance consumers that it's really exciting to expose the brand and introduce the brand to new people just through that retail experience. Definitely. And just have a brand productivity increase in other channels. Because when you launch new channels from the primary that you launched with, you obviously don't want it to be a secondary to everyone. You want it to have its own feet and its own merit. And uh, your fragrances are absolutely stunning. So they deserve its own limelight in its way, right? So it's cool to, to have that opportunity to not be like, oh, they also do fragrances, by the way. It's actually maybe some people can now be like, oh, I actually discovered it first as a fragrance and I didn't realize they have candles. So it's quite interesting to see. I'm sure you're getting a lot of feedback from people um, and then they're probably surprising you with saying, oh, I didn't know you had uh, either vice versa, right? I didn't know you had yeah. candles. I didn't know you had fragrances. So that's pretty cool. Um, I kind of would love to know sort of like, so I know you love your body as well, but like what sort of, for now, the future of boy smells is it just more incredible sense uh is it new categories what can you share yeah i mean we have a really exciting product development pipeline right now uh you know we're really focusing on fine fragrance next year just because it's our fastest growing part of the business um Business is up, yeah. I think, 125% last month. Last month, our fragrance was up 125% to last year. Um, and with Sephora, Amazing. with Sephora as well, getting behind fine fragrance, um, that's super exciting for us. And we've also just launched a new format for fine fragrance, like a travel spray that's like 10 yeah. ml versus our 65 ml bigger size. And so we're kind of talking about like I, I personally think the way that people engage with fragrance now is very different from the last generation. You know, I think the last generation was very much like I'm a Chanel number five girl and like I will always be, you know, like my I think both my parents yeah. had like one fragrance and they wore that for, you know, all of yeah. their lives. They don't need more because I've introduced mm -hmm. them to like a bunch and they wear different fragrances depending on their mood yeah. now, but that's very much like a, a new mindset. So I, I personally am really excited about, I mean, I'm sure your, your vanity is the same as mine. It's like, I have like 15 different fragrances at least on yeah. my vanity. And I like, and I'm like, Ooh, yeah, I'm going to be like that today. Or I, you know, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling fun and playful. So I'm going to do this. Or I have a really important meeting and I want to like make a really strong, cool impression or, you know, just depending on like what you want to do and like what you're feeling, like you might pick out a different fragrance. So I think that a smaller size and being able to own a lot more is like a really exciting prospect. And so diversifying our, our size offering to the customer is like something I'm, I'm super excited about. And I think we're going to be planning some really exciting, like limited edition drops of the yeah. travel size, you know, throughout the year. So, and then, you know, whatever that we hear the most from the customer will graduate that into the larger sizes. And so I really love this idea of like being a lot more playful in like how we release yeah. and like talk to our customer, I think it would be really exciting. We also have a ton of super exciting candles planned for next year. And beyond that, you know, I think that, um, you know, as you said earlier, like I love this idea of like turning everyday rituals into this moment of self-love or self-expression even really more than anything else. And so, you know, there's, 
tons of things in the bathroom that feel really mundane that I think are ripe for like exciting newness and exciting reinvention. And, you know, I don't think anybody like brushes their teeth with like crest toothpaste, you know, or like, you know, whatever toothpaste. And they're like, Oh, this is so me, you know, but like, no, if you have like, it's just, you know, that's all they have right now. That's the problem, you know? Yeah. yeah. But if they have like a violet <laughs> and yeah. like, and violet and smoked tea flavored, you know, toothpaste or a pink peppercorn and rose toothpaste. Like I, if I use that and it looked amazing, I'd be like, yes, this, I feel like myself. I feel like I'm my best self today. Oh, and, for sure. I wouldn't even like, give that to someone without feeling awkward about like, I've just gifted you toothpaste. I'm like, no, this is like really cool. <laughs> you know, you'd use this. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where imagine just gifting someone like Crest. I'd be like, thanks mate. Don't want to speak to you ever again. <laughs> but this is like rechanging even the way we, we consume things, right? It's not, how can that industry be only used for personal care, but instead can we open it up for you know, other, other ways of gifting and stuff. And I think yeah. it is an untapped area. And I think the consumer does want to, and I'm sure you get a lot of data now from your existing community that's probably coming to you guys with like different wants and wishes already seeing what you've created in the past. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really fun to see, like, we do a lot of limited editions as well in, in candles. And it's really fun to hear like, Oh, oh what, what happened to this? Or, you know, or like, to look at like our search history on our website yeah. and just be like, Oh, people are looking for this and they can't find it. You know, like that's always fun to see. Like, for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that, I think that a lot it's a, it's of, a mindful our, way of growing too, right? Like, absolutely. Sorry, sorry, if, yeah, okay, go ahead. We graduate a lot of things like from limited editions into the permanent collection. We love to like play with limited editions and, you know, and, 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 and things that have shorter shelf lives just to see like what people love. And then that can always inform like what we bring into the permanent collection, which is, is, is fun to kind of like have our audience participate in like the decisions that we yeah. make as a, as a company. But I yeah, th going back, I do think though that personal care is an opportunity for self-expression and self-exploration. And, um, and I know there's a lot of companies right now that are kind of reimagining products to like a new sensibility uh, for mm. a new consumer. But I don't think necessarily a lot of brands are necessarily being like, how can you like really express yourself with radical self-expression and radical self-acceptance you know a, a, a lot of it's still very like like safe um but i i'd rather i'd rather people stop and be like whoa like what is this and like and feel a little like almost nervous just to like embrace it you know because i think that that's yeah I, I want there to always be excitement with the brand you know like it should never be a dull experience with the brand and yeah. um and, and, and I think that's why people love the brand, you know, cause it's, it's, there's, you know, we're all, we're always going to be doing something fun and, and, and something that you're going to want to like participate in. Oh, I love that. And then honestly, the industry, it's surprising how much of, I think the industry lacks that it sounds, it's also because I think a lot of businesses today run again, uh, kind of, they don't have that purpose over profit, right. That they, they think about like, um, okay, what are we going to make money first? Let's just be very archaic. What's the industry doing? What's the competitive analysis mm -hmm. landscape? But I think you got if you know really what you're creating and you're just wanting to sometimes change what we see, do things a bit differently, have fun with it. I think that's at the end of the day, it's so obvious. That's what consumers want too. It's what I want as a consumer. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's like so easy to just stick to that if you kind of like just yeah you have that conviction to make sure you do it and i think you are doing it which is so exciting um and i love also it created itself from exactly not really i think it comes from that early mindset of i'm just gonna have fun with this and create it and let's see where it goes and then look where it is today and you're gonna still yeah. continue to have fun with it and see where it and goes a lot of that goes back to like even like going to school in london and through that especially mm. in fashion, that British sensibility of like, you know, working for Giles and going to central St. Martin's and like 
just like British um, creativity and British fashion, like having a little bit of a sense of humor in it mixed with luxury is like very much embraced, you know? And I love yeah. that. Um, I, you know, being able to mix a little bit of tongue in cheek, you know, like our, our summer, our set names are like Polly Amberis and cowboy Kush and Rose load. And like, there's like the, a lot of the names are a little like, you know, a, a little wink, wink, and a little, you know, a little tongue in cheek. And like, I think that's why the brand has done really well in the UK in particular is because, you know, it has that little, I don't know, it has, there's a certain like British sense of humor about it too, that, that doesn't detract from the luxury of it. It just like adds to it. Um, that, that I, that I think is, I'm, I, I got from going to school in London. And I see that I'm obviously born and raised in London, went to school here, went to, I went to Imperial, but very close to Central <laughs> London. Yeah, like, uh, I can exactly see exactly what you, I mean, maybe for some people in, in, who haven't been to London or Britain, like Great Britain, may not see that, but I'm, I know exactly what you mean. It's exactly that. It's got that duality as well. Of, but still, that, that experience you had while you were in Nasty Gal and stuff, I can also see that kind of... Yeah. Um, but it's also so... Connect. Like I, when I was at Dior, like one of my PR counterparts in in the in the in the in Paris, she had an interview and she was telling me about how they were, she was asked what's her favorite like fragrance, and she was and they kind of like said a few, and she was like, no, it's not female fragrance. I use everyday Dior men, Dior homme. It's my go-to, and it's a really oody one. And and everyone was like, oh, okay, I didn't expect that. And it's like, well, why did you expect it to be one of the only? Like the female Jador Miss Dior, it could be, you know, uh, and she just says that's her scent. That's a scent of choice. Scent is isn't bounded by gender. It's it's really something that's just more deeper than that. So, yeah, I think it's a very connected feeling globally. That I'm really glad. I think boy smells will work really everywhere in the world, not just in certain markets, which is really yeah. exciting. So I hope also global expansion is a big part. I'm sure of what you're planning to do in the future as well. So. It is. Exactly. Yes. Um, um, we're, we're super excited about, you know, the growth that we might see in the next couple of years that, you know, takes us from being one kind of brand to a different kind of brand. But, you know, it feels like each time we kind of tackle a new project, we've just kept, kept caught our breath, you know, from what we've done before, yeah. you know, it's not that, stuff um, I can imagine. <laughs> you know, that, um, it's yeah. super exciting, but you're kind of like, Oh, it's getting bigger. Oh, it's still getting bigger. You know, like, it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. managing growth. It's only is, when you yeah. go on, on that week trip away and you're like, you take a moment when, whenever we end up getting a moment to breathe, we look back and mm-hmm. they're like, Oh, like I just had this, I was like, we're 40 people now and we were three people two years ago. And I'm like, wait, how many people do I have in this company? I was just seeing the org chart to do a presentation next week. And I was like, I had to like remember that. I was like, okay, I have this person. Who else am I missing? And it's, it's so bizarre to see how quick, you know, it, and it's so exciting to see the family grow as well. So that yeah. can come in many forms, whether it's your team, your product portfolio, your retailers, it's your stakeholders, right? Yeah. It's part of the journey. Totally. So it's very, very exciting. So before we go to fire round questions, I have um, a desert island situation. So it's going to be a bit mean, but uh, you know what's coming. I'm inviting you to a founded beauty retreat. Uh, I wish I could do it in person in real life. Imagine that'd be really fun. But for now, it's virtual or whatever. But you, you can only come with one product, one scent tool. And uh, I think let's stick with candles for now. Uh, and then I'll ask the same for fragrance. So for the candles, what's your one go-to candle scent? Well, now that you said an island retreat, it's kind of influencing like my decision making. Um, yeah, I uh, if right. I had to pick okay. one, ride or die fragrance. Yeah, so she's a candle would... and she's a fragrance. Yeah, yeah. I well for fragrance, I'm gonna go with Woodphoria just because it's like so easy and like universal mm. and like even when somebody else is wearing it, I'm like that smells so good. What are you wearing? And they're like, wood for you. I'm like, oh yeah. Like it's, it's like, it always surprises you. So it always feels fresh. You never are like, oh, not this again. You know, like, you know, you can kind of like wear something out and then yeah, yeah. that that's for fine fragrance. Then for candle, I'm going to have to go with Copal Phantom, which is like one of our phantoms, but it's just like lot. It's like earthy and spicy and Copal and smoky. And it's just kind of like, universally great it's kind of like um like 
I'm making choices that are like things that I never get sick of. So it's like, you know, yeah, it's, it's like the safe, not safe, but it's like, I know that I won't be disappointed by those. Get choices. bored of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's, I have a, I have a few of them at home, but right now in the office, I have a cedar stack. It's so, mm. I mean, what I love about all your fragrances is I kind of like, normally when I shop online and stuff, if I see certain notes or certain um, ingredients, whatever, and especially for fragrance, certain, like, yeah, definitely some uh, florals on other notes. I'm always like, uh, it's not for me. It's not for me. But you have this like crazy duality or I don't know what the word is, conglomeration of like, there are some things I usually wouldn't like, but then there's some things I really love. And I ended up, whenever I smell your, your candles mainly, I was always like, I think I, I love them all because there's some notes in there that correlate with my, with my floral, for example, um, uh, nose. So I love this whole, like, like I actually, it's really annoying from a consumer perspective because I want to buy them all. So you're going to make me, uh, yeah, definitely struggle there. <laughs> but it's really cool I that think- you've got this really connected approach. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, like, you know, the... <sighs> It used to kind of be like, oh, this is like leather, woods, musk, mm. and da da da. You know, and it was just kind of like very individual, all, all, yeah. all, all the same, same kind of like type of things. You know what I mean? Mixed together, yeah. And it still is. Let's be honest. Like the, most candles, it, this this is the only option today. It's, it's very like you like this, you like this, you like this, yeah. You like this. It's what the options then, are. Yeah. But I think like identity today can be like contradictory, very layered. You know, like. Mm. We all like play so many different roles, you know, like I'm a partner to somebody. I'm someone's kid. Like I love feminine things. I love masculine things. I wear Carhartt. I wear pearls. Like I have to be a boss and a founder and like lead a company. But I also, you know, I'm the father. We're so multifaceted. Yeah. So multifaceted. And like I live in a very liberal city now, but like I've come from a more traditional background, like all of these things like layer into like how we identify ourselves. And it's, it's very complex. It's very three dimensional. And I think of like scent notes as like leather evokes this for me. Violet evokes this for me. Black tea evokes this for me. You know, like black tea is like having my PG tips when I was in London going to school, like leather (laughs) reminds me of my dad's car. Like, Violets yeah. remind me of my mom's powder from France, like all of these different oh, things. Wow. And then you mix them all up together and like you end up with a, hopefully people find sense that like represent the complexity of their identity, not exactly. the and we narrowness. Are all very complex. Exactly. It's yeah. a reflection of people today. Honestly, it's yeah. a reflection of, we are all very, very complex and we're always changing all the time yeah. because of things exactly. around us, but also as just humans, I've never changed. I mean, sometimes I say, Am I just, am I like schizo? Like, am I, what am I doing? Like, one minute like this, next minute like that. I'm like, no, that's just me growing and changing and, and yeah. things around me are changing. And I, you know, I've, similar to you, I've lived in like, I lived in Paris for many years. I've, I've lived in different countries. And I think you get experience and different experiences make you different. And I think mm-hmm. I love the fact that your brand represents that. So amazing. But so now we're going to go to fire round. These okay. are, this is like first thing that comes to your mind. So my first question is what's another beauty brand could be in any vertical skin, whatever, uh, that you're currently loving right now. Another beauty brand that I'm currently loving right now. Um, I recently got gifted um, a bunch of products from Youth to the People, and I've literally drained through them very, very quickly. Another acquaintance of mine owns a brand in LA called Noto Botanics, and like all of their Mm. face cream and face oils like smell so yummy and so delicious and then so i love yeah. both of them and then I, I i use the ordinary a lot too just because i'm so compelled by the price and and the ingredient focus yeah. and stuff like that oh great answers um yeah i love you to the people as well i had joe and greg on the podcast a few months ago and they're amazing and yeah, yeah now, fantastic. I, I love what they stand for as well all the funds as well so very cool um what's a guilty pleasure of yours a guilty pleasure of mine, um, food. <laughs> I love to cook and, um, yeah. I love, to, I love to eat out. And, uh, so, you know, discovering restaurants and splurging on restaurants and stuff like that. And, and even if I've had a bad day, like I know I'm going to want to order this or that, you know, so I, yeah. food and, and smell and taste is so 
similar to, you know, fragrance and smelling too. And I just love, I love exploration into that and, and, you know, indulging in, you know, your favorite comfort food, you know, on like a, a hard day. And, and most days are can be quite not hard but draining right a lot of oh, things a lot of battles yeah. to face every day challenging and uh, what's nice even now like i'll have I'll, i have another podcast after uh with bobby brown actually and then i and then i have a really nice dinner to look forward to tonight i'm going out for a really nice chinese so i'm like you know that's kind of like my okay worked hard today gotta go and um do that so very excited um my next question is what are you currently watching or reading Oh my gosh, what am I watching or reading? Well, okay, this is embarrassing, but I've started Dune like five months ago and I haven't finished it yet. The book? But it's what I'm Yeah, the, the book. I, the movie. The book. The book. book. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the book. Uh that's what I'm reading. Um I've just yeah. we're so busy that it's you know, I don't get a lot of time to, but I will finish it hopefully before Christmas. Um, and then watching right now, um, I'm watching white Lotus, which is yeah, amazing. Really yeah, yeah. I love it so much. And then, um, I'm watching the new American horror story as well. Is a new season. That's just yeah. Come out? Maybe. What? maybe, okay, maybe I'll have the... Oh my God. But no, but I have all the, you know, the the all these other like HBO all these uh, doc, these websites where you can stream them. Oh my god, I'm gonna check that out. I love American Horror Story. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Um, uh, next question is: mm-hmm. Do you have like a favorite social media platform right now? I mean, the brand is very so active on social media. I personally mm. am not super active on social media, um, just because. I don't know. I'm too busy to, to totally engage in it, but I do yeah. love watching like uh, travel and cooking like reels and stuff like that. That for some reason that's like what is served up to me and what I engage with the most. So that's that's what I'm doing. I love that. Um, yeah, I look at my TikTok. It was so funny. Yesterday I had, um, I was doing a podcast with Inga Theron from Face Gym and we were talking about TikTok. And then I was like, she was like, you know, she's like, I want to, my, my last question I'm going to ask you, she answered, um, I want to work with goats or something. And I was like, yeah, I think my TikTok showed me a lot of goats. And then like, I went this evening, last evening, and then there were like three goat videos. So I sent it to her and I was like, yeah, this is currently what I'm being served is goats. And I don't even know why. I don't even like goats. But there you go. TikTok thinks I like it. So the algorithm is so funny how yeah. it just like, it probably knows, maybe I do like it. It probably knows me better than I know myself. So there you go. But it's yeah, funny. I, I, um, I get served a lot of like unlikely animal best friends, you know, like a, yeah. like a sloth that's best friends with a yeah. dog. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, it was like, he's like, and it probably is because I end up watching the whole thing a couple of times. Yeah, so exactly. the algorithm's like, yeah, this guy loves sloths so and this guy loves goats. I'm like, I guess, I don't know. I, just, I guess so. Um, but yeah, it's so funny. Um, my next question is, do you have a favorite quote? Yeah. Like, so I, like, I do this one kind of yoga. Um, mm. And I have a teacher once that said, the lunar plus the solar, wait, the lunar plus the solar. The lunar plus the solar equals the stellar. Um, And like, and like, and there's a lot of like, like, like introvert, extrovert. Like there's a lot of dualities in the, uh, in in that word. Yeah. In that, in that, um, in the type of yoga I do. And so I always just, because like the lunar is feminine and then the solar is masculine, um, but equals the stellar. So like, it's something that, I don't know, I guess like in business and like with the brand, like the lunar plus the solar equals the stellar. I just like, I, I just love, love that. that idea. Oh, I love that. That should be something as well. You should do like on a, on a t-shirt or something in your apparel. <laughs> and that's so cool. I think that's, and it also really represents, I think what you, what you stand for as well with voicemail. So I think that's a really powerful quote or saying. Um, my last question, Matthew, is um, if you weren't a beauty I'll even go as far as say beauty or fashion entrepreneur in this industries. What could you be doing? What would you be doing right now? Oh my gosh. That's such a good question. Um, I love, um, interior design. Um, and, um, so that's always something I've thought about. Um, and then I have ideas for things that 
our beauty adjacent, you know, that, mm. that I haven't manifested yet. So I have, you know, other ideas, uh, percolating around there, but, you know, really in my heart of hearts, like, I just want to live like, you know, I, I've been so tied to cities because of work and professional life. And, you know, there's so many beautiful places that are not in cities that I would love to explore yeah. living in at some point, um, if I get the opportunity to, um, and just kind of like being in nature a lot more. I'm a big animal lover, so maybe there's a pig or a goat, you know, or, you know, a, a, a few more uh, trotting feet around um, yeah. and just having like a little bit more of a kind of, of a little bit of a slower pace just because we've been going pretty yeah. fast for past uh, couple decades, I guess. So, you know, having lived in London, then New York and then in LA, I think there's a desire to, you know, unplug at some point and just kind of, you know, really let my, my nervous system unwind, you know, after such fast pace yeah. for so long. Oh, I love, no, I think that's a beautiful answer. That's I think it's so funny. I just mentioned the goat thing. Cause that's like, I think that was Inga's answer yesterday was I would, I want to have a goat farm and just raise goats. So it's like, maybe that's something that there's a thing where founders are like, we just want to be with the nature animals a bit away from thing. One thing I would do would be, I would move to, either in between India and Africa and kind of build like, a, like not necessarily a sanctuary, but I would basically work with local organizations for wild animals. Um, that's kind of, well, it's kind of what I'm doing with my, my charity I have right now with my brand, but I would do it more and be there more than run it from here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's Amazing. I'm hoping when I, if I exit and this and that, I'll move there as soon <laughs> as I can and, and, <laughs> just be present in that, in that nature and ground myself every day. Uh, but Matthew, it's been such a pleasure um, speaking to you. I can speak to you all day, but I'm sure our paths will cross in person very soon. And when I'm in uh, America, I'll let you know. And likewise, if you come to London, uh, you yeah. know who to call. But in the meantime, Absolutely. where can everyone follow your brand and get to yeah. you know, stay up to date with everything? On Instagram and, uh, and on TikTok, you can follow Boy Smells, um, www.boysmells.com. Uh, we have a lot of newness coming out right now between holiday and Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all those kinds of things that we celebrate in the States, at least, you know. And then, um, yeah, so come check us out. Uh, there's always going to be something new and fun to discover. I put all the links in the summary as usual, guys, so you can tap away. And Matthew, I'll see you very, very soon. And thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom. Oh, of course. Thank you so much, Kash. Take care.